Hey, what's up everyone? John at the Geek here and today I'm going to be doing a review on the Motorola Zoom. This is a tablet powered by the Android Honeycomb OS 3.0 right there in all its glory. This just came out recently. Uh, paid a pretty penny for it. Um, bought it from the Verizon store. I went in there asking for the Motorola Zoom and uh, they told me that I couldn't walk out unless I signed a, um, or I, unless I got the $20 a month um, data plan. Uh, so it's 20 bucks a month for one gigs of data. And I might decide to keep that, I don't know. I could cancel it at any time, uh, but I'll try it out for a month or two. So uh, this is the tablet right here, it's 10.1 inch screen. Um, some of the hardware specs include a dual core processor dual one gigahertz processor so it's like having two gigahertz of processing power uh, it's made by the nvidia um, and it's called the tegra 2 processor and it's a uh, a9 core arm core architecture something something um, so anyways uh, that's the processor and the memory is uh, one gig of ram and it has an internal storage of 32 gigs, right? Um, so that's a little bit about the innards. Now the outer part here have a, a built-in camera right there, built-in camera, and then flash, and then the power button and lock screen, right? So that's that. And then there's also a webcam right here and also the headphone jack is right here and then the SD card slot which by the way does not work so it's a software issue that Motorola is trying to figure out um, this is a uh, dually here so in this slot come on focus in this slot there is a a slug for the GSM card 4G card presumably that's going to go in there right and then uh, there's also a slot for the SD memory card which I'll take out right here so that's a micro SD memory card and the slot does not work um, but they're working on that so that's one of the issues at launch I'll put this back in here right uh, what else oh speaker located there and then you have your port connections here this is the power connector right there a uh, another power connector for a dock and the monitor uh, output to a HDMI and the micro SD slot which by the way does not charge the tablet via the micro SD slot because I tried plugging that in um, to my charger, a micro SD uh, or micro micro USB, sorry, uh, charger, and it did not charge the tablet. It gave, came up with a little warning says it's plugged in, but this device does not charge through the uh, micro USB. Please use the supplied charger, uh, which is here. Which is actually, let me show you this charger here it's proprietary meaning uh, Motorola makes this tiny little doodad here come on focus right there tiny little thing I could totally see that breaking off on here like so right so enough about that um, it looks like this thing is can be opened 
by unscrewing the two little screws at the bottom there. Standard torque screws. There's a light sensor on the front here, which is cool. So um, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna change the uh, camera angle here so I can record the screen. And I wanna talk a little bit about the apps and uh, how some things work and uh, many things don't work. Yes, that's right. It's not the perfect um, operating system for a tablet. It's not there yet. And I wanted to talk about like some of the apps that crash, some of the problems that I've had. Um, but then also a lot of the cool things that I've been that I've been experiencing with the Android Honeycomb OS. All right, so here is the lock screen. And to unlock the screen, you got to do this little circle thing here. And so uh, this is the main page. And these are the various windows that I have. I have up to five windows that I can add a lot of icons to. And if I hold here, it gives me up options of what I want to add. So this right here is widgets. And if I wanted to add widgets, these are all the widgets that I have available to me. Uh, app shortcuts, if I wanted to add a shortcut to one of these windows, I'd click and drag and put it wherever I choose. If I want to remove it, right? So down on the bottom left here are the back, home, and multitask windows. These are the apps that I have currently running here. So if I want to click on one, Gmail, and click on that and that starts up. Um, this is the back button, home button, and the windows that I have actively running. Right, so uh, one of the cool apps that I like using is the Pulse News. And these are the apps. Um, this is a news aggregator, so I can choose the different uh, news um, sites that I want to check out. And so, say for example, here's Android Central. So it's just a feed of all their news. And then Engadget, it's one of my favorite ones. So this particular app was made for the uh, Android tablet and it works really well so let's go back and then the Facebook app so this is um, this particular app even though it looks like it was made for um, the tablet with this widescreen mode here it actually when I go into the regular this is what happens and I can't change this, there's nothing I can do. This is just like on the Android phone, um, but it's blown up or it's stretched out. It doesn't look pixelated or anything like that, but I can't change it to make it uh, widescreen or uh, landscape mode. It's just stuck in portrait mode. And that's, that's how it is and that's all I can do. But in the newsfeed, it'll go to landscape because I think that's how uh, it normally does on the Android phones. Right, so I'll go back out of there. Another app that I like using is SpringPad. This is the app that uh, I've had crash on me. Let's see if I can get it to crash now. Huh. Yeah, so it works fine now, of course, for the video. Ah, there we go. So when I hit back, it said the application SpringPad process.com SpringPad had stopped unexpectedly. Try, please try again. Force close or report. I'll report it later, but this particular SpringPad app was uh, made for the Android phone and it wasn't uh, necessarily made for the uh, tablet. So let's go to the marketplace. And let's take a look at the featured tablet apps. These are all the apps that are made for the tablet. 
right? Not a whole lot, but it's getting there. It's actually double of what it was a week ago, which is kind of cool. So anybody that's uh, making apps for it, you certainly don't have a whole lot of competition. So there's another app I want to show you here actually is the Google Body. This is the ones that you kind of see in the commercials and uh, it shows you like muscle type stuff, bones, and I can do a search, right, for the femur, and it brings it up for me here. Got your vascular organs, nervous system, so that's kind of cool. I don't know what other settings I can change here. Um, I think I can do nope nope yeah so that's pretty much that program there um, earth and sky map I kind of need GPS but I don't think I'll be able to go into it uh, these two programs uh, Sky Map is uh, made for tablets, which is really cool. Movie Studio. This right here um, is for editing video. I haven't shot any video, so I really can't show you that right now. Uh, maybe I could shoot something, though. So let's go in the camera app. I like how this right here is made for um, shooting, um, holding the tablet like this so maybe if I I can switch the camera here and now I've got the front facing camera on and that's the LED indicator showing that I have a front facing camera on couple of pictures that was taken I don't know by who right and I could switch to video mode right down here to shoot video with it so let me shoot a little bit of video I'll be shooting I wonder if I could switch well no can't switch so I'll stop that Let's go back out to the movie studio. Let's do a new project. Just gonna try out the video here. Never really done this before. Looks pretty intuitive. Yeah, so basic editing app, video editing app, which is kind of cool. I like that. I might use it in the future, or more than likely, I probably will use it. Uh, so that app worked fine. As you notice, it did not freeze or crash. So uh, when I signed into my Gmail account on this, it actually downloaded, look at all the apps that I have, downloaded all the apps that was on my phone onto here which was really cool it took a while and I thought that the tablet froze but it was actually downloading all my apps that I had on my phone unfortunately not every app works okay let's say for example there's this game called traffic jam we're gonna run this and you'll see so you notice right here this part is blown up or it's stretched out to fit the whole screen but the actual app is right here if you see the ads that just rolled up here right so this is not the scale and like I'm gonna actually beat the level 
But uh, yeah, so this is pretty much. I don't know what these buttons do here. Oh. Yeah, so this is an app that's not made for the tablet. Right, let's see if there's another app. Angry Birds, that works fine. And that was made for the tablet. Let's see what uh, Paper Toss does. I'll oh, see Paper Toss isn't either. Yeah, this isn't the scale either. How was your world tour? Yeah. All right. Enough of that. <laughs> Sorry. Um. So that's pretty much it. This particular screen is a 1200 by 800 resolution. The uh, uh, front facing camera is a two megapixel camera. The rear camera is a five megapixel camera. One of the things I wanted to show you was this little pop-up screen here that kind of floats on top of the main screen, which is really cool. I really like that. What I plan on doing is actually also hooking up um, this on my next to my TV and running the clock app and uh, the clock app looks like this which is pretty cool another cool feature was that uh, when it synced up with my account all of my settings that I had on my phone was applied to here which is really cool even the background all right so let's take a look at YouTube this is what YouTube looks like it's a cool kind of 3d effect going on here what you would normally see on the home page let's check out my videos These are my subscriptions. Which is pretty cool. These are my videos that I've uploaded. I like how it's presented in this thumbnail kind of view. It's really, really cool. Um, if you check out Ars Technica, they did a pretty good uh, review of the Motorola Zoom. And um, they did a lot of benchmarking of the performance on the processor here. Uh, as far as the weight goes, pretty much just like the iPad. A lot of people kept telling me that held it. They're like, oh, it's heavier than the iPad. And no, it, I think it feels the same because I had the iPad for about two weeks. And it's the same um, weight to me it is and I think um, specifically it's probably like one gram heavier uh, which doesn't you can't I don't think you can really tell that 
Um, as far as battery life goes, it's an interesting... Um, I thought the battery life was going to really, really, really suck, but it was actually pretty good. It lasted uh, a good five hours of use off and on, I would say, with a few intense uh, usage, uh, reading the news and uh, editing notes uh, in my spring pad here and uh, Facebooking, right, um, and emailing, um, and about two hours of standby idling total about seven hours it went down to about 20 percent uh, after seven hours um so in a day i'll probably use it mm, i want to say like maybe four or five hours of of off and on use intermittent use and uh the battery life l lasted pretty well i haven't tried playing video but i really don't have en enough time to play video or stream music or do any of that stuff so maybe on the weekend i'll try that um google talk is pretty amazing with the video uh, when i talked to somebody on their laptop um using a fun front facing camera it was pretty awesome and they were on a mac which was pretty cool uh oh i think it ah there we go yeah that was kind of weird so it's little stuff like that that um it's a little quirky it's not quite there yet but you know what i like it um i'm also going to pick up the ipad 2 and do a comparison of the two so stay tuned for that in a couple of weeks and um yeah thanks for watching this is johnny geek out peace